How's it going guys? So a little bit of a break from the tiny house just for a day. It'll be back probably tomorrow. And uh, we're going to visit our buddy's, uh, our buddy's place. Um, he just lives south of Tucson. And he doesn't have like a, a unique house or anything like that. But what is really unique about where he lives or on his property is that he runs about 90% off of uh, rainwater. So here in the Sonoran Desert, um, you know, water is a very, very precious commodity out here. These cities would not exist unless there was like water basically diverted from, you know, rivers and stuff. So it's really cool to see somebody who is living entirely off the water that, um, you know, falls from the sky. And in this area, we only get uh, roughly maybe 11 to 14 inches of rain per year. So it's not something that a lot of people do just because it requires a pretty decent uh, initial investment in terms of like tanks and all that kind of stuff. But Joe and his family have been living um, primarily on rainwater for the last, I think it's six or seven years or so now. Um, so we're gonna go check out his property, see his setup, and he in particular is someone that has really inspired me to be like, all right, we're gonna go 100% rainwater instead of like thinking we're gonna build a well or anything like that or hook up the city water. It's like 100% we're gonna do this rainwater thing and we're gonna show you very soon what it looks like. And Hannah says hi. Hi. So we just arrived at Joe's beautiful house here. Um, so we're just south of Tucson, about 45 minutes or so. Tell us just a little bit about what you have going on here. Well, you came here for the rainwater harvesting. Um, I live in an area where we uh, got some well estimates and it was way too expensive to drill a well. So we said, let's try rainwater harvesting. And that's what we live on for about 95% of the year. I've got a little culvert cistern right up here and I've got uh, about 11,000 gallons of poly tanks behind my house and a whole bunch of downspouts. Cool, let's just walk around. So you have a couple of spouts going into your culvert tank there. Yep. And then the rest of them are working all the way around the house going to the poly tanks out yep. the back there. Yeah, so basically you'll see that PVC pipe up there. It collects from two sides of that pitch roof and goes into the culvert cistern. I call that my cool cistern because it's kind of the coolest looking one I have. And then everything else comes off of gutters and goes down a various uh, series of downspouts. If you cool. want to look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, what I like to refer to this as is a wet pipe system. So when I'm collecting water, all of the water fills up into these downspouts into this PVC pipe. It's a four inch pipe underneath the ground and it basically holds water all the time until it gets to my tanks that are on the other side of the house and just so long as the outlet is lower than the inlet so that's the inlet up there uh your water will move pretty easily so it comes around around here most sides i have two downspouts and it's collecting at a uh, slight angle from both sides and i have screens on top of the downspouts again it goes down into the ground got another one here <laughs> i'll let you do your fancy editing got two more here this is kind of a jerry-rigged system <laughs> but, uh, I was it just works. trying to collect off of uh, two ends of the pipes again that goes in the ground there I got two more there excuse all the mess and basically the pipes meet down in the ground and they go right down in here to these two draining pipes and these basically empty into that tank and this is a 5,000 gallon tank. 5,000 gallons and that's actually some of it's actually buried below the ground as well. Yep so this line right there is halfway so that's oh, 2,500 wow. gallons and I think this is 5,000. So this is the initial tank so all the water comes in here yep. and then the overflow comes through this pipe here. Yep so the overflow comes in right there and it just empties into this tank. Mm -hmm. 
So this is kind of like a different way of doing, I guess, almost like a first flush divider. So all the dirty rainwater comes into here. All the sediment, bird poop, or whatever <laughs> well, comes into here. Well, nothing. Pretty much all the bird poop insects um, are pretty much strained off with all of the. Um, at the top of the downspouts, there's little uh, strainers. Yeah. That's all strained there. So the only thing I collect in this tank is pretty much just sediment. So it's just like dirt and dust and pretty much nothing else. No leaves, no bugs, nothing else gets in here. It's just a little bit of dirty sediment. And a lot of people ask about first flush devices. I've just chosen not to do them for a cost thing and I didn't want to have to buy the extra PVC pipe. And essentially what this tank is, <laughs> is my first flush device. Mm -hmm. So everything settles down at the bottom. I clean it once a year and that's pretty much it. And then the overflow, which is going to be all the nice, like even more cleaner water is just going to overflow into your other tanks over here. Yeah. So pretty much by the time that water gets to that level, <laughs> everything's set, uh, I guess, uh, sedimented out and everything that comes over here is pretty clean. So I consider these my clean tanks. Uh, you won't find any uh, sediment or anything like that. Uh, I could take a clear glass of water, dip it in there, and the water's gonna look perfectly clear. Yep, so these are my two clean tanks. These store all the water. I treat them with a little bit of bleach. And uh, that may sound <laughs> crazy to some folks, uh, but it's really not crazy because most municipalities use chlorine gas or a liquid chlorine. And that's pretty much essentially chemically the same thing that is happening in these tanks. And I do it to a lesser scale. It's basically just to make sure any bacteria uh, that could be in there is pretty much mitigated out. And from there, this water for showers and laundry and dishwasher and everything going into my house <laughs> there's no other filtration that's happening uh, believe it or not rainwater's not going to take your skin off uh, like some people get scared of and then everything in the house uh, for cooking and drinking goes through a Berkey uh, water filter okay so this is a culvert cistern in front of our house and the one interesting thing that I've incorporated into this, uh, as you'll see, most culvert cisterns, they all need some sort of, uh, that's my dog, uh, they all need some sort of overflow just to keep them from uh, like chawing out the foundation of the cistern. So what I've simply done is just taken that simple overflow pipe and extended it out to here, uh, past this little berm for this uh, mesquite tree. And when it overflows inside the tank, there's a pipe inside the tank, it overflows, comes out here, and then it runs along this little swale or ditch, whatever you want to call it, all the way down here. Hits right into here and goes down towards my fruit tree. So this, uh, this <laughs> gets clogged. It's not without maintenance. Keep so uh, basically all that water comes down here underneath that little pallet footbridge and it collects in here and pools up because this is the lowest point of this swale. And this is just here to, uh, strain any debris from going in and the water pools up and goes in a pipe under there to my fruit trees that are exclusively watered by gray water and rainwater. That's awesome. What kind of trees are these? Uh, these are, this is a peach. This is a peach. This is a May pride peach. And I don't remember what kind of peach this one is. And this is a granny Smith apple, which gives us like 10 apples a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's growing, it's growing. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so that pipe you saw on the other side, it just comes in here and I call this a little diversion box. I just made it with pallet wood and it has a little Ikea blue tub in there that fills up with water from that pipe. And then this PVC pipe distribute, uh, distributes it out evenly amongst both of these little uh, nice. uh, swales or little fruit tree wells. And then to control them, um, I have these, I built these little concrete water weirs. So if I want to hold water in, in here, I just put that little block in there and water can, you know, get up to a certain level. And for the rainy season, I just leave this open all the time. And as this fills up, it moves over in here. This is to prevent any, uh, you know, like mulch or anything from going, or losing too much extra topsoil. Mm -hmm. Goes into that, that next well and then just so on down the line. Always planning for overflow. And do you feel like the tree is necessary to grow um, just to kind of keep things a little bit more shaded from the sun? Uh, yeah, I like having the tree here uh, because it does just give extra shade. I know it's kind of a foreign concept for people in other areas <laughs> of the world, 
but in the desert shade helps things grow. So these are all my peppers. Uh, they all got eaten off by rabbits a few months ago. So they're just now trying to survive. Nice. And then I got tomatoes, some more peppers, some squash plants in there. And then I just built these garden hoops uh, to hold this bird net in to keep the birds nice. from eating them. That looks familiar. That's EMT piping. Yep. From uh, electrical conduit. So then for example, any water that comes or like spills maybe over off the roof, so this is called like a uh, rainwater harvesting earth, earthwork, right? Earthwork, yeah. Brad Lancaster would call this a berm and basin. Um, and I did a lot of my designs <laughs> based off of his his books, which are awesome books, by the way. Uh, but yeah, so I have that that has a downspout. I always put barrels at a lot of those corners because sometimes during a hard rain, it skips and a little bit of that water that skips the gutter will hit the gutter but still kind of trickle down mm -hmm. and believe it or not those barrels fill up pretty quick and then everything else uh i don't know if you can tell all of this everything slopes away from the house but any anywhere where i have a tree i always put a little berm so mm -hmm. this collects water all from there and it'll collect probably to about that level nice and so then this it just tree virtually down. gets nothing <laughs> no extra house water it's just rainwater, and it's growing Pretty awesome. Gets gray water every once in a while. Oh yeah, by the way, if you wanna see any of these projects in a lot more detail, uh, check out Joe's channel, Homesteadonomics. Um, he's got videos on pretty well everything that we've gone over so far. And uh, I've been a little bit addicted to them and just trying to gain as much insight into rainwater harvesting uh, from somebody who also lives in a, uh, in a desert. And this is his latest project, this sunken greenhouse here. These things are just amazing. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty clean in here, I guess. Watch out for the scorpions. Really? This is all, this is a Sutter retaining wall. And then what I plan on doing is I'm gonna make some little tray basins to where when I water with the plants, everything's gonna come over and fill into a little gutter. And then all of the uh, plant water that seeps through the plants, I would, the compost tea, uh, will come through here and fill into the little buckets that I can use to rewater the plants. I'll just open this so you can kind of see. So this is basically how it works. This PVC pipe empties in here. You can see that this is totally full. And you can see the water bubble in there a little bit. What do you do? Yeah. Right at the top there. This is going to go for the rainwater garden, mm. and I'm going to be planting some fruit trees all around there. Okay. So mm -hmm. because that's the wettest area of our property, so I'm just trying to like, Thanks. yeah, from this tarp up here. Yeah. So basically, this is just an area I flattened out, and it's just got a berm all the way around it, and it very slightly slopes to this direction, as you can see, by all the sand. And then I have a little screen here. Um, that just keeps any debris, but all the water uh, fills up in here and flows down that pipe into that IBC tote. So it just flows right downhill into there. And I just stabbed myself <coughs> in the ass. Oh, oh no. And this works uh, without like pumps or anything like that. It's just simply elevation. Difference in elevation. This between elevation those. is higher than the top of that IBC tote. So it just flows down naturally. It's hard, it's hard to envision yeah. project, but it just all comes down the driveway. It hits that big berm that you're on. So it's kind of hard to tell, but that is just a, like a little speed bump. You probably noticed it when you were driving. Mm -hmm. It comes through here. And then this is my little water weir. And all of this is just sediment that like sand that collects. And to keep that out, to mitigate that, I just put these little pieces of pallet wood in there okay. just to help it block, <laughs> help this stay here hmm. and allow the cleaner water to go through. When it comes through here, this feeds a 60 day corn, which is just barely starting to grow, uh, but it should look better in about a month. And then all the overflow comes out in here into a little pond that I have here. And I just cover them with pallets for like little kids. Nice. But, uh, this is about almost two feet deep in the middle here and probably holds three or 400 gallons of water. All this fills up in these 
two little ponds. Oh, you got and another pond over there. Into this one. No, no. Ponds, just keep the soil wet and this stuff grows? Or what? No, no, I literally just use these buckets to to water them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like when the water, when it rains, the water actually does pool up in this corn area. And I actually had a little bit of sand, <laughs> almost kill the first crop of corn mm -hmm. I planted in there. So that's why they're a little bit struggling. <clears throat> But this is all like home job. <laughs> so it's all rainwater. Yep. Nice. So this one is up about three and a half feet deep. And it's not quite as long, but it holds a bit more water than that. Maybe like 500 gallons or so, 450. Wow. All right, so we just finished the tour of all the, uh, the rainwater projects that Joe has on his property. So again, check out his channel. And uh, yeah, he's got some really awesome stuff on there. And now I'm gonna try this. Plywood. Yeah, boy. Crazy contraption here. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so it's just like a normal one. So it is a little bit uh, wobbly. The, the springs are pretty loose. Oh. But if you get up here and if you start with a, a back foot on, like okay. this, and then go, you'll be able to go. You wanna try it? Yeah, it seems so a little like, bit easier. So like do that, stand in the middle. And then you'll. Okay. Yeah, once you get saved, once. 